straight away introduce the first COM talk, which is by um, Karen Greiner from the Equal Access in, um, International. And she has this extremely intriguingly entitled talk, The Dark Side Innovators. We don't have to like them to learn from them. I'm really looking forward to this. Karen, you're on. Microphone three, check, check. Can you hear me? I've been told I talk fast. If I do, you can say slow down, speak up. Um, good morning, everyone. I am grateful that you're here because I recognize that this is the first session of the second day and yesterday was packed. And the summit and this session, we both have competition. And the competition is clear. It's the beauty of Bali. It's your jet lag. It's just wanting to talk to colleagues in the corridor. So the fact that you're here is really exciting. Um, and I'm excited to try out some new ideas. And I hope you'll talk to me later about what is sticking, if anything, from what I'm talking about today. Um, I got some advice yesterday. And it was get straight to the point. So the main point that I want to make is that dark side innovators, what makes them successful is that they understand and they believe in the capacity of community members. And they do this to a degree and an extent that I think that we could learn from on the social side. And you're going to say to me, but wait, we do this too. Don't tell me that on the social side we don't respect communities, because we do. And I, I do believe this. But there are some ways that they're outperforming us, these dark side innovators. Um, honestly, the dark side is seducing where we are often persuading. Um, they are seeing the powers in communities and the powers that they have to decide and to act or to not act in ways that we don't often, um, I don't think that we think about enough on the social side. We often see deficiencies and things that are broken and things that need to be fixed. Um, and we don't always do this, but I think we do it often enough that we can spend seven to 10 minutes this morning talking about it. And you can tell me later if you disagree. Um, the dark side, I think they work harder. And they have more resources. Um, so you're going to say we don't have the resources to invest in the ways that corporations do. And that will be true. But I have some tips for you as well. Um, so when you think of the dark side, I had this whole you know, Darth Vader slide and da, da, da. And I thought that's very culturally specific to talk about Star Wars and the dark side. But um, you may be thinking about something else. But I'll tell you what I'm not going to talk about this morning by choice is politics. I've decided let's not talk about current presidents of any nation. Let's not talk about past uh, wonderful rhetoricians who have done terrible things like Hitler or Slobodan Milosevic. Let's not talk about them. Um, and I do that for a reason. I just simply don't want to be contentious. But I also think we don't need to, because there are some other examples that we can pull from. So in the lineup of the dark side, first we're going to hear from the violent extremists. Um, second, we'll talk about corporations. And I'm not critiquing capitalism. Please don't tweet that I'm saying that corporations are bad, because they're not. But sometimes they do things um, that are a little bit dark. And often they do things that we should be learning from more. And we, many speakers yesterday referred to the tricks and the tools of the, of the corporate and um, commercial sector that we can learn from. And thirdly, I'll be talking about the entertainment sector. Once again, entertainment is great. We love it. I'll be talking about video games in particular. Not all video games are bad. I love a good game of Ms. Pac-Man, like anybody. but. They also have a way of sucking us in and making us use a lot of t our time. Um, so they're a little bit on the dark side, some of them. So I'm using these three examples to make three concrete points. That was the other advice I got yesterday, is make those two to three points and make them clear. Um, violent extremists, they understand the powers of community to act or not act. Corporations, they understand that communities have the power to buy or to not buy. And video games, they understand that without people participating and playing, they are going to go out of business. So the power is with the people. Uh, it's not us who empower the other. We don't give voice. They have voice. I think that the dark side, they get this more than we do. Um, so each of the examples I'll talk about is going to illustrate one key lesson. Um, violent extremists I'll use to talk about respect. Corporations, I'm going to talk about research and the power of research. Um, and video games, I'm going to talk about recognition and public reward for action. Because I think that they're doing this quite well, and we can learn from this. Um, a quick working definition of innovation. I don't equate innovation with technology. It's often technology, but it's not always technology. And I'm going to define innovation as an idea, a process, or a product that's new or perceived as new. 
So please humor me if you're in the audience, you've been doing this for 20 years and something I talk about is not new to you. It could be new to your colleague sitting next to you. So if you'll give me a little bit of leeway on the innovation side, I would, I would appreciate that. Okay, if I had slides, it would be a big word. It'd say respect, respect. We're gonna talk about respect for the next three minutes. No, two minutes. Um, violent extremists, what they understand about young people in particular is their desire to contribute that they are agents of change in waiting. They're not beneficiaries, they're not recipients or targets, these are actors, and they know how to motivate them. And they do it through vision. Saint Exupery once said that if you wanna build ships, you don't tell people to go out and, and collect wood. You have them dream of the endless sea. And I think they're really good at selling the vision, and they're really good at getting people to contribute and to act, of course, in horrible ways. They're blowing themselves up. This is not something I'm recommending, but this idea that young people are actors and not broken beneficiaries is, is really powerful, and I think we can learn from them. And the other thing they do well on the innovation side is how they transfer content offline, Bluetooth, WhatsApp, Telegram. They do that well. We're also doing this, so I don't want to suggest that in the social sector we don't know how to do this. I've seen colleagues from Mercy Corps in Burkina Faso using WhatsApp. Uh, soon we're going to hear from Peripheral Vision International, who's been using a range of things, including um, pirate mu music sellers to transfer content. So on the social side, we do this. Uh, I just think that the dark side is a little bit ahead of us, and honestly, we learn from them um, and try and use their tricks, but in helpful ways. Um, the next two examples, I'm going to go a little bit faster hopefully not speaking faster, but maybe shorter, because I think we've absorbed some of these lessons already quite well. So from the corporate sector, social marketing, are there any social marketers? Population Services International has been doing it for so long, they do it really well, social marketing. We have been learning from corporations. Um, on the entertainment side, entertainment education, here we are. I think this is the fifth conference only in 20 years, but for those of you, I think the BBC started in the 50s with the Archers. So we've been doing entertainment education. We know some of the lessons from drama. Um, but there are a couple more lessons to learn. And one of the lessons on, from corporations is how much they invest in research. So the big word is research. So we're talking about research. We do it. They do more of it. They do it more often. They do it earlier. They spend more money doing it. And what corporations spend a lot of time doing is understanding what people want, what they desire, and not what they need. They start there with the empathy. And those of you who attended the human-centered design sessions yesterday, you know that this word empathy, um, you know, we do it, we know it, but th I think they do it more and they do a little bit better. Um, an innovation that came out was powdered um, infant milk and it did a lot of harm. You know, uh, it was perceived as new and it was new and they managed to sell something to women and to families in developing communities that ended up having a harmful effect to children because they they used unclean water. So here's an innovation that came in. It, did, it had some really bad effects in some instances, but what the corporations selling powdered milk understood is that women appreciated convenience and that there was a certain status and a prestige to having this commercial product. Uh, it was about desire, it's about status. So you know, we're, again, where we're thinking about what people need, they're thinking about what people want and, and where people are now. And again, with the you know, the designers that are thinking about empathy, there was a great essay that came out talking about the need to flip Maslow's hierarchy on its head um, and to think less about needs and more about desires. I think Mary Stopes International has done a great job. They have nail salons where w uh, young women can come in and learn about um, family planning. So the social sector is doing this quite well, um, but we could be doing just a little bit more. And I think the corporations succeed because of this research superpower. And yesterday, the issue of data mining came up, and I think this is another place that we could learn. Uh, this, there's a ton of data available, and we often don't have the resources to use it um, in the social sector. Um, finally, because I've got two minutes left, and I've got to fit in my joke. I don't know if anybody caught that, tweeted out that I was going to tell you a terrible joke this morning. Um, the last example from video games, what they do very well is they make progress and action visible, and they reward it through points. Uh, they scaffold, and you're happy because you're in there, and you're gaining points, and you feel rewarded and recognized. And if any of you are out there who have ever written a report and sent it to your boss or to your team and, no and nobody read it, and you're like, oh. you know, we could be using some more motivation in the social sector. We could recognize people's actions and contributions and of community members. And we've recently begun experimenting in equal access with using WhatsApp to publicly recognize the radio stations that turn in their reports on time. So trying to use the positive side. So by publicly recognizing people, I think we could motivate a lot better, and video games do this. If you want to know um, gamification, many of you are already doing it. 
Um, and people are presenting on it at this conference. You can Google it, check it out. You can learn the details there. Um, I'm going to end, so I wanted to just recap my three, uh, my three points, which were respect for communities, the importance of research, and recognition and visible reward. And because those make three R's, and because I said I was going to tell a terrible joke, I'm going to pull out the dark side pirate who's going to tell you to remember respect and recognition and research. Arr, and aren't you glad that you came this morning to hear that terrible joke? And because I don't want to be remembered as the pirate joke lady only, I'm going to, to end on a serious note with a quote that I, uh, from a, a writer who I admire, uh, who's Audre Lorde. And she said that you can't use the master's tools or you shouldn't use the master's tools to dismantle the master's house. And the reason she says this, I think, is because she fears that we will become like the master. We'll become dark or join the dark side by using their tools. And that's a perfectly valid point. What I want to suggest is that we can use those tools. We don't have to dismantle the house. Of course, we should. But we can build another house just next door. And we can make that house so interesting and exciting and so full of respect for community members and so um, built on insights and empathy from research and so full of recognition for the creativity and contributions of community members. And here's some things I want to suggest for the declaration, that people will come over to the light side and they'll want to, we will compete with the dark side by using their tools. So thank you very much. Karen, thank you so much. Absolutely fantastic. And just about dead on time as well. Um, we're going to zoom.